So let us pray. Lord, let the Holy Spirit come down through this church, through me, for your glory, Lord, and an accurate reading of your word and understanding. Amen. Now, the Bible gives a time period and it gives many examples and it's very, very specific. It doesn't get anything wrong. It predicts exact things that always come right. Today we're doing the time of the reaper. Morning, brother. Morning. I like your style. You come just after the scene. You don't have to do it. <laughs> okay. So, and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice. Now, it's three different angels here. Okay. This is the second one. Crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Now when you look at the picture, you see, when the time comes, three angels will come down, and they will gather everyone together, and that will be it. The good, the bad, all of them will be brought together. And what do we see here? We see a time limit, a warning. Now, if someone says to you, there's a storm, don't go out there, there's a storm, it's a terrible storm, and you go out there and something happens to you, whose fault is it? It's not the person that warns you. <laughs> yeah, it's yours. Please, please, don't hang out with these friends. They're bad news. And someone goes to prison, you go to prison with them because they're your friends. Whose fault is it? It's not God's fault. He warned you. Do not keep company. Oh, you put this on for me already. You wouldn't think I'm an IT manager, would you? Okay, here we go. Now, this is the verse before that one and the verse after that one. And I looked and behold a white cloud Remember, who comes on a cloud? Jesus. The next time you see him, that's why a lot of people like the Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever, they say Jesus already came in 1914. But the Bible says every eye will see him. When did that happen? Never. Because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> so people say to you, Revelation's already happened. Just laugh in their face. Because we know what happens in Revelation. So, and I looked, behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And he that sat in the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. So we see that. We see Jesus bringing judgment down. I gave people 2,000 years to change. <laughs> okay? Maybe it's long enough for people to have a chance. Uh, that's okay, she's okay. Hello, boy, good morning. Okay. So, and another came out of the temple which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. You see, people think they're scary. Or oh, this guy's in power, he's scary. This guy's a mayor. This guy's a president. This guy, they're nothing. Compared when this thing happens, God doesn't care. Okay? And another angel came from the altar. Notice how many angels there are doing God's work, which had power over fire and crowd with a, cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle. To Jesus. Okay? Saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Now, some people get scared by Revelation. Christians shouldn't. <laughs> okay? Revelation is always good news. I know when you read it, it looks scary. But for us, it's good news. It means our time's coming. Well, we're going to be with Jesus. 
it also means the bad people are going to be judged, which is also good news. Hello, boy. Don't disrupt the service. We're not going to let you disrupt the service. Okay. Now, then the angel thrust his sickle into the earth, gathered the vine on the earth, and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Notice the picture and the symbolism. It's time for me to collect all the people that are on the earth and judge them. It's time. It's finally that time. I know when um, Joe grabbed the baby Can't put money in that. Yes, yes. Okay. <coughs> so, in the Bible, who is the person who judges everyone? You see here, it's very, very clear. For the Father judgeth no man, but has committed all judgment to the Son. Okay, Jesus is the person on the cloud. We proved that. Jesus does the judging. All judgment to the Son. That all men should honour the Son. What about someone who only honours half of the Bible? But they're not honouring the Son. What about someone who doesn't accept that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Or doesn't accept the Trinity, or doesn't accept it. Well, here it is. You're not honouring the Son. You don't honour the Son by lying about innocent people, being a fake judge, a fake policeman, about being a, a, a false president with secret handshakes. You don't honour God like that. You're not honouring the Son. Even as they honour the Father, the same amount of honour, Okay? He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Now, if he's going to be doing the judging, what happens? You don't want to annoy the judge. Okay? I'm standing in front of this man telling him about my sins. Okay? Yeah, have you all got that? He's saying, yeah? You got that? Good. <laughs> Okay, so if I'm standing in front of the judge and I say to the judge, I don't believe that you're there. Well, I don't believe in the laws that you're telling me about. I don't, these things don't honor the son. Okay. Now, verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my word and does what? Believes on me. Okay, on, on him that sent me has everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation. What does that mean? Hell. You're not going to go to hell, but you're passed from death to life. When your time's up, you get eternal life. And God will write the balance of any injustice things that you've had. If your life has been cut short because of, you know, doing the work of God, God will balance that. Okay, truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. What if somebody died and didn't know about the word of God? Son, you can't disrupt the church. No, no, no. Being my son doesn't give you special privilege. Okay? So... Okay. Yeah, that that's what was wrong with the video. Okay. So, if somebody has died and they didn't get a chance to know about Jesus or anything like that, that's not going to prevent that person from hearing the word of God. 
Now, it's, it's some people, they say, you know, we can't pray for the dead. That's right. There's nothing you can do. It's not in your hands. Once someone's died, that's it. Okay, they had their chance. But nobody can cheat Jesus. So if, if people got killed without having a chance, God will write that balance. There isn't anything that God can't do. They can't cheat him. They can't con him. The chance for eternal life will be given to everyone. And if there were people that died before, it says in Matthew that when Jesus died, he went and preached to the souls in hell and things like that. Nobody got to cheat God. Everyone has the same thing. And they that hear shall live. I'm sorry, son. I can't have you disrupt the church. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has given the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also. So if people don't want to get right with Jesus, that's their problem. They get that chance because he is the Son of Man. So we've got someone, now, typically what people will do is they try to reduce Jesus' doubt. Oh, he's only the son. Oh, he's an angel. You know, which he isn't. The Bible doesn't say that. Okay? They try uh, to, re in, in the Bible, the new versions, they shave him down. If somebody calls him master, they call him teacher. If they say to him, Jesus Christ, it just becomes just Jesus. So in the new Bibles, they're trying to uh, reduce the authority that Jesus had. Okay? They're desperately trying to do this thing so that people don't think much of Jesus. I should have put it in the sermon. I think I'll do it next week. I'll show you how they try and demote him for what he is. Uh, for example, if you see, see them speak to the Muslims, they say, uh, oh, he was just a prophet. He was just, just, what, a prophet that came back from the dead and did all these miracles. What miracles did Muhammad ever do? None. Zero. In the whole Quran, Muhammad never ever performs a miracle. But they feel like they want to bring Jesus down to a, a normal level. You know. Now, where was we? Okay. Marvel not at this. Don't be totally surprised by this. But an hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Now this very, you see, for me, this was very unsettling because I think, one, you know, uh, people, there's certain people that are just unlucky. They didn't get to know about Jesus before they died. Jesus writes that balance. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. Okay? There isn't, a lot of people ask me, how can a loving God make hell? I think it's the most loving God that does make hell. <laughs> there should be punishment for evil people. Okay? I want evil people to be punished. Obviously, I want my own sins forgiven. You know. But here's the thing. There are people that know about God and still do evil. Now there's two types of evil, not in the Bible, but from what I've noticed, there are people that sin, just they go against the Bible, they shouldn't worship this thing, they you know that. But there's another type of evil. And the Bible calls it wicked. Wicked is somebody who deliberately does a certain type of evil. They harm babies, they harm these types of things. This is uh this is a place where I'm sorry, but that person has to go to hell. I don't want there to be a softy, soft God, because that's not one I would worship. I expect punishment for bad people at the courts. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes innocent people suffer. But I know this, that my God can't just give eternal life to bad people. That would make him a bad God. So there has to be that punishment. Now, God, God, uh, Jesus explains it in a parable. 
כן? תראו זמן טוב. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who made a marriage for his son. God making the marriage for his son. Okay, bringing us with, uh, together with his son in Christ. He sent forth his servants, okay, the prophets, pastors, uh, missionaries to other countries, real missionaries. Sent forth with his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Now originally, the people of Israel, he called them. Think of how special this was. He said, I'm sent first to the kingdom of Israel. So who had the best chance? The Jews were given the best chance. I called them, but they wouldn't come. Okay? Okay. Well, half of them have, half of them did, and half of them still do today. But you see, some of them wouldn't come. Again, I sent forth other servants, different types of messengers, okay? Saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I prepared my dinner. My ox and my fatlings are killed, this great party. All things are ready. Come to the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Now, people make light of Christianity, right? Oh, you know, it's a good book. Oh, yes, I'm a Christian. I, I, I go whenever there's, I go church whenever there's a death or a wedding or something like that. You make light of it. Or, I don't really mind if, if uh, you know, a, a man dresses up as a woman or a woman dresses up as a... You're not a Christian anymore if you say that. Okay? You should mind, because God minds. It's specifically banned in the Bible. Oh, well, you know, it's just a Christian show. It's just a, a kid's show. It's just... Why do they always target children? If you get a company like Disney, they pay money for these perverted people to dance in front of children. Disney. Disney pay for abortion clinics, mobile abortion vans to go around giving people abortions, which is killing their industry, really, if you think about it, because their industry is kids. But that's what they do. Okay? They made light of it. Yeah, the Bible says this is wrong, but so what? Okay? Here's the problem. Now, this means something in Cyprus. In, in Cyprus, we used to be very so poor <laughs> that eating meat, my father told me that eating meat was something like they did once a month. If you was lucky, you could eat meat once a month. Okay? It's not like today. Suvla, suvla, suvla every day. Okay? And everyone eats suvla. Which is, you, know, you shouldn't do it every day. It's bad for you. Charcoal, charcoal, charcoal. Blah, blah. But anyway. Okay? On a very special occasion, you will kill a fatling, a calf, or something like that, and everyone will be happy. Look, today we get to eat meat. Today is a massive celebration. Wow, what a day. Today we get to eat meat. Okay? So everything's ready. I'm asking you again to come. Remember when Jesus first came to the Jews? Come, oh. repent, join the kingdom of God. It's ready, it's ready, everything's ready. But there's a certain type. Remember I told you about the wicked. It wasn't enough that they made some people made light of it. There was a more evil type of people. The remnant took his servants, treated them spitefully, and slew them, killed them. It's not enough that we're not going to follow God. We're going to kill the people that are telling us about God, like they did to Jesus. But when the king heard thereof God, he was wroth. He sent forth his armies. Don't forget who they're messing with. And destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. What would you do if someone killed your son? You've got to think about some of these things. They're, they're just... 
It's not enough that they turn their back on God. They have to kill his son, his servants, and all these things. They're just the type of people out there. Do you feel sorry for them when their time comes? No. Then said he to his servants, the king, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. They weren't worthy. I invited certain people, special people that I thought were special, to come to my wedding, but they weren't that special. Go you therefore into the highways, as many as you shall find big to the marriage. You're not going to stop this party. Now invite everyone outside of the kingdom of Israel. Go and get everyone. Okay? Said, remember what Jesus said? He's saying it ahead of time. This is what happens afterwards. But before he tells them the story, after he tells them the story, he says this. He said unto them, Go ye, go everyone, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now we go back. Now. Go out into the highways. Go outside of Israel. Get everyone, as many people as you can find, and invite them to this wedding. This wedding's going to happen. People are going to be given eternal life. Whoever wants it can have it. That's how easy it is. (coughs) So those servants went out into the highways. They gathered together all, everyone. We're going to call everyone. Christianity is everywhere. There isn't a place where there isn't Christianity now. Okay? You could go, the fastest growing church in the world is Iran. (laughs) It's the fastest growing church in the world. Literally the whole country is becoming Christian. And gathered together as many as you found, both bad, and good. Why is he inviting the bad people and the good people? Well, when you first invite someone, they're not quite right. If you first invite someone to a church, it doesn't mean they're perfect people. The church, and hearing the word of God, changes someone. It bears fruit inside them. Okay? So you invite everyone to the church. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Now the church is massive. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not a wedding garment. Now, what does this mean? You're not dressed right. Remember what Revelation says. They had washed their garments and made them white. For this particular wedding, you need a white garment. Your sins have to be washed away. Baptized, washed away, your sins gone. Now you look good. Now you have the right appearance. You've got that special look, you know. <laughs> Do you remember the toothpaste adverts when someone would smile? You'd see ding. Like, <laughs> their teeth would do a special flash, you know, on that advert. Okay, it's washed away. Have you washed? Come in, come in. Hello, little Christian. And big Christian mama. (laughs) Okay. Well, now you're dressed for the party. If you have your garments looking right, and you've got, you know, when you see the James Bond film, he's always got the tuxedo. You know, it's not a very moral film to watch, but. You see, he's always dressed in a tuxedo. You know, he's swinging off the walls and things like that. Still got the tuxedo. You know? If you're dressed like that, you can come into the wedding. If it's if you're dressed properly, if you look right to God, you have that radiance. Look how great this person is. Look how great Vilma is. She looks great in, in the washed garments. Look at her sister Jonah. Look how great she is. She's washed her garments, they're clean. 
you're ready for this party. And he said to him, friend, how came thou hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. The king was speechless. How dare you show up to this wedding without clean garments, not dressed properly? And the king said to his servant, find him hand and foot. You know, it's like putting handcuffs on your hands and feet. Morning, brother, morning. Okay? And cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, let me read the rest of it and I'll explain. For many are called, but few are chosen. Okay? Now, God calls everybody. And he couldn't care less what country you're from or what color your skin is or anything like that. He doesn't care about stuff like that. People care about that. God doesn't. Okay? Notice, if you're not dressed properly, now some people think they are. Notice this wedding guest goes to the party thinking he's okay. There are many Christians that think they're okay, or, or people that call themselves Christians, they're not. They could be priests, they could be choir members, they could be like that, um, what's that place in America, is it America or Australia? Who's that one that's sung 10,000 Reasons? What's that? What's their name? That fake church. Bethel Church. Bethel Church. The fake church. The pastor, you can always tell a fake preacher. You know how? He comes out in a t-shirt. If you watch these church services they have, he's always got a tight t-shirt on and a beard and, 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 and stuff like that. Well, if you're serving God, wouldn't you dress up a little bit? My tie is not perfect. My clothes, you know, they're not great. But if I'm going to represent God, I'm going to dress like this as much as I can. I'm going to try and look the best I can. Okay, I'm going to wear the best I can. I'm going to wear the garments. The problem here is, in these other churches like Bethel, okay, the preacher comes out with ripped jeans to preach. Trainers, uh, you call them sneakers, right? Uh, a tight t-shirt that says ACDC on it, a satanic band. You're not representing God. You're representing Satan. And the rest of the church members who are supposed to look up to you, what do they see? An irreverent person. Somebody doesn't care about God. You see these people, these Stephen Furtick and, and, and this uh, Todd White with his long dreadlocks hair. A white guy <laughs> with long dreadlocks hair. If there's a preacher, wouldn't he cut his hair? Wouldn't he try to look right? Wouldn't you shave your beard? I tried once. When I used to uh, work for <laughs> um, unsavory people in England, okay, I used to guard their properties for them, okay, their clubs, their pubs, their things like that, okay. I had a, a goatee, you know, always perfectly trimmed, you know, and I looked to the part and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I tried to do that for when I was going to preach one day. And God wouldn't allow me. I got itches, infections, and stuff like this. God doesn't allow me to go back to my old ways. So when I see these fake Bethel preachers with their uh, same-sex choir leaders, I feel sick. I want to throw up. I know that they're not properly dressed. They don't have a wedding garment. They haven't washed their sins. How are you going to have a worship leader with her husband, you know, uh, a woman, <laughs> leading a church service. You can't do that. It's saying it's okay. Now, a church leader is supposed to be an example. I'm not a perfect example. No way. But I try. How have these people tried? If I'm wearing a T-shirt, how am I, have I tried? What, you've got no shirts at home? They make millions. 
There's no effort on that part to repent. So that person is not going to be chosen. Okay? Now, here's two important differences. I haven't listed the whole verses, okay, or, or this whole parable. But you're going to see uh, the difference in these two verses. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then comes the wicked one. He catches away that which was sown in his heart. Okay? This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and does what? Very important. Understands it. You heard the word of God. Did they understand it? How important is it to God that you understand the word of God? Look at the difference. Understand it not and understand it. It's the main difference here. Which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth fruit. So, <coughs> some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Now, what does that mean? I'll explain this and then the first part. First, he understood the word of God and beareth fruit. The fruit is in himself. Has he stopped swearing at his wife? Has he stopped drinking, getting drunk? First, he wants to see the fruit in the person. Then he wants you to bring it forth fruit from other people. You're a laborer in a vineyard. Okay? So, the first thing that happens, I've understood what God has meant. Now, what are the dangers of the flip side? He understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. Some people read the Bible and think that they should worship their pastor. They understood it not. And now the wicked one has come. Some people read the Bible and think they should live off the congregation. They think that they should take money from women who work. Now let me tell you something. A man will never... A real man would never accept money from a woman. Unless it's his boss, of course. <laughs> and he's working for a boss. But what I'm saying is that a real man doesn't do that. A real man works. The apostles worked. And it says, we worked so that we would not be a burden to you. We don't want any money to come out of your pocket. So we work. We feed ourselves. Okay. That's the difference about understanding the Bible. How different is it? Well, some people read the Bible and they say, uh, there's no Trinity in the Bible. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at them like this. And I'm thinking, Jesus said, the Father, the Son, go out into all the world. Teach in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you can't see the Trinity in that verse, why are you calling yourself a Christian? You didn't understand it. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, very, very easy to understand. But they understand it not. The Seventh-day Adventists, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, they understand it not. The wicked one comes. Where does it say you can have four wives in the Bible? It doesn't say that. Oh, but Solomon and David, what happened to Solomon and David? <laughs> the exact example you're using is the example against it. <laughs> they, don't, they don't understand it, so they make up their own rules. Where does it say to pray to a saint? You understand it not. You don't understand the Bible. Where does it say that there's purgatory? Where does it say weird other things that people make up? I remember what they said to me in the Orthodox Church. I had my hands behind my back like this. Don't do that in a church. <laughs> How could you do that in a church? You put your hands behind your back. What's wrong with you? Well, <laughs> Then I'm looking through the Bible. 
It's not here. It's not here in the Bible what you're saying. I need, you know, I'm having problems with my baby, so I'll pray to St. Christopher. How does that help your baby? Where does it say in the Bible to do that? More importantly, in the Orthodox Church sometimes, now, I'm not against the whole Orthodox Church. There's just a few things I wish they would change. As they're going round, and we all bow our heads like this, they have a golden symbol of a sun as in the sun in the sky, not of Jesus. And they walk round. Do you remember this, Maria? Or not? You see it, yeah? And they'll walk round with this thing, and everyone's bowing to it. Stop. Wait. Why am I bowing to an image of the sun? <laughs> I worship the actual sun, not the sun in the sky, a ball of fiery gas. Okay? Now, In this situation, what do we do? It doesn't mean they're an evil church or an evil thing like that. Well, some of them are. But if you can change those people so that they do understand the Bible. So if you come to church, some people ask me, Mario, um, should you follow the old rules of the Jewish people? Okay? Yeah, you, you shook your head. No. <laughs> I didn't have to ask Vilma. She's, she's, she's very sure. She's very, very sure right there. What about speaking in tongues? You remember? You walked straight out of that place. That day, I loved you, man. I, I fell in love with you that day. I thought to myself, he just walked out. Someone speaking in tongues, I'm gone. I don't know what time for this. They understand it not. Okay? So when the apostles were, were talking in a different language... They weren't going shalom, ahomala, bing, bang, bingo, and things like this, like these people do. They understand it not. They don't understand the Bible. Now, the Bible says, how many times should you need to be baptized? Our religions. Once, right? Once. You get baptized once. That's it. No. According to the Pentecostals, you have to be baptized twice. You haven't been baptized twice. What are you talking about? You need a baptism of fire. Really? <laughs> According to them, you have to be baptized a second time in fire. And you're not a real Christian because you haven't been baptized in fire and you don't, don't speak gobbledygook. No, it doesn't work like that. Let's understand the Bible. Now, my mother's gone today. My family's gone today. To give... Food for the dead. <laughs> we have to make food for the dead and offer them food. And but Do the dead people actually need food? No. But it's a Greek tradition. What do I do? What do I do about this situation? You can tell them once and see what happens. But if you don't understand the Bible... You've got to understand this. The only rules you need to follow are very, very easy rules in the Bible. Repent and be saved. If Mario tells you, you have to go to this place, this special mountain, and crawl up the mountain on your hands and knees, which some Greek people do. They're my people, so I can say whatever I want. I'm Greek. But if I say that, I'm lying, and you don't have to listen to it because it's not in the Bible. Now, let's go to the next one. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Let's think about the things we're doing. Now, obviously, I love my father very much, okay? We didn't get on. <laughs> but when we went to church, he had some strange ideas about what church was because they were put into him, okay? I had to kiss a bird. I had to do all these things, these weird things. And I said, no, why? I considered my ways. I said, wait a minute. These traditions that I'm doing, I don't like them. 
I'm not going to do them anymore because they're not in the Bible. I've considered my ways. If I'm a Christian man and I'm not going to provide for my wife and I'm not going to work and I'm not going to do this, you need to consider your ways. <laughs> if you're treating your wife badly, you need to consider your ways. If you're not going to give your inheritance to your son, and you're going to give it to some girl you met who's, you know, half your age, you know, come over because she loves you even though you're covered with wrinkles, <laughs> you know, but she really, really loves you. It's not for the money. You need to consider your ways. If you're worshipping a football team <laughs> and you're burning someone's car because they're of a different football team, you've heard about this stuff happening. Well, consider your ways. I love it. They do all this stuff and then go to church. <laughs> and <laughs> I know a guy, I, you see, I remember this guy and I remember just staring at him. He had just cheated on his wife with this thing. <laughs> and he said to me, you don't, you do your cross from left to right. That's a terrible sin. You don't do it right to left. Oh no, what's happened to you? I think it was, you, just <laughs> you were just cheating on your wife. <laughs> I saw you with her. <laughs> And you're judging me. Why don't you consider your ways? You know? It's, <laughs> some of the stuff I've seen was hilarious. I, I, I can't tell you all of it that's here. But I remember some guy laughing at me. It was some Mormon guy. I said to him, you believe you can become a god just like God? He said, yes. And you don't believe in gambling? No, gambling is wrong. I said to him, why do the Mormons own casinos then? You could see he was considering his ways for a little bit. It didn't work. The guy got, he was angry with me. You're always angry with someone who tells you the truth. I don't know why. In Christianity and in churches and in life, many times you're going to hear stuff you don't want to hear. I don't like Mario because he tells me things I don't want to hear. <laughs> it's okay, you can hate my guts as long as you can sit your ways. <laughs> I don't mind that. I've preached for too long again. I always do that. I just keep talking. Okay. So, we're going to pray now. Um, we're going to pray. For those watching, uh, these are our contact details. Please contact us whenever you want. Uh, just reach out and let us know. So, let us pray. My God in heaven, praise and glory to your name. Lord, please forgive our sins and make us better people, Lord. Lord, we want to reach out to, to the world. Give us courage to do that. Let the Holy Spirit speak in us so that we know what to say. Let us not fear what to say or what to do, but know that you are always with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to say the same thing that Jesus said to his apostles. Go out into the world. And teach people about Jesus. Okay. Uh, I have to stop the video now. For those watching. God bless you. And uh, see you next week. Have a blessed week.